In this segment, we will try to realize shift registers. We will begin with a 4-bit serial input, serial output, unidirectional shift register, followed by a 4-bit circular shift register, followed by a 4-bit serial input, parallel output, unidirectional shift register, and a serial or parallel input, serial or parallel output, unidirectional shift register. So we will try to implement the shift registers using D flip-flop. So what is a D flip-flop? So input D, output Q, they are all clocked. Right? So when I give 0 at the input, for the clock pulse, after the clock pulse, I get 1 at the output. Similarly, when I have 1 at the input, after the clock pulse, we get 1 at the output. Right? So the output essentially is the input after the triggering pulse or after the triggering clock. Right? So now, let's try to get the equation. So D, Q, the next state of the output. So when the input is 0, and if the previous state Q is 0, after the clock pulse, the next state will be 0. If data is 0, and if the previous state is Q, after the clock pulse, we get 0 at the output. So essentially the output, the next state of the output is the data. If data is 1 and the previous state is 0, after the clock pulse I get 1 at the output and if d is 1 and the previous state is 1, the next state is again 1. So what is the equation? So this can be simplified using a two variable k map where the inputs are d and q and the output being the next state which is q plus right so 0 1 0 1 so i have 0 4 0 0 0 1 condition and a 1 here okay so what is q the next state q plus is nothing but d so this is essentially a D flip-flop where the output after the clock pulse is the input itself. So let us first try to design a 4-bit serial input, serial output, unidirectional shift register. So what is a serial input, serial output? So there are four bits. There are four registers. So it's a four bit shift register. So what do you mean by serial input? I give data to the first flip flop. After the clock pulse, this data moves here. Okay? And becomes the input to the next flip flop. After the next clock pulse, this data will go here. After the next clock pulse, this data will come here. And after the next clock pulse, this data will come here. Okay? So therefore, if the first bit is 1, so I get this 1 will come here after 1 clock pulse, after the second, after the third, and after the fourth clock pulse, I get the data for the output. So this is essentially a serial input, serial output, shift register which is unidirection in one way. So let us see how this can be implemented using D flip flops. Right? So since it is a 4 bit serial input, serial output, shift register, we need 4 D flip flops. So I have 4 D flip flops. All these flip-flops 
are triggered by the same clock. So they are all triggered by the same clock so that at the same time the input data is available at the output. So this is the clock input to all the four D flip-flops. So I have one serial input. So this is serial data input. Okay, this is D. Since it is serial, the output Q is connected to the input of the next flip-flop, which is D. The output of the second flip-flop is connected to the input of the third flip-flop and the output of the third is connected as the input to the fourth and I have Q here. Right? So I get the serial data output here. Of course I get complement that is Q bar is also available. So let's take an example and let us see how this works, right? So I have a clock pulse. Let the data be 1011. One, one. So I have 1011. One, one. Okay. So let me call this as QA, QB, QC and QD. Right? So I have QA, QB, QC and QD is where I get the output that is the serial data output is available at QD right so initially I have 1011 here okay so at the first clock pulse this one appears at the output of the first flip flop QA so that becomes the input of the second flip flop now the outputs are QB, QC and QD are undefined, they can either be 0 or 1 but we are not interested. The next clock pulse, the second clock pulse, I have the next data 1 which appears at the output of the first flip flop QA. This one gets shifted here because this one will get shifted here. QC and QD are undefined. The third clock pulse I get 0 at the output of QA because 0 is the input and this one gets shifted here, this one gets shifted here undefined and the fourth clock pulse, this one appears at QA 0, 1, 1. So we observe that after four clock pulse, the first bit appears here. So I need the remaining three bits. So what do I do? I need three more clock pulses. So clock 5, so this one will appear here, this 0 here, this one here, undefined. The sixth clock pulse, this one is this 0 will come here, 1, so this is undefined. And the seventh clock pulse, this one will come here. What is it, the output of QA, QB, QC? We are not interested. So after the seventh clock pulse, I, I would have got the last bit, which is the fourth bit. Okay. So in case of a four bit serial input, serial output, unidirectional shift register, I get all the four bits only after seven clock pulses. Right. So after the fourth clock pulse, we get the first bit of the output. The fifth clock pulse, I get the second bit. The sixth clock pulse, I get the third bit. And the seventh clock pulse, we get the four bit. Right? Now, can this be modified into a four bit circular shift register? Yes, we can do that. Now, a small change to be done here a circular shift register where the output is fed back to the input. So, how do I feed back the output? So, connect QD. to D, the input of the first flip-flop. 
right? So this becomes a 4-bit circular shift register. So this essentially becomes a 4-bit circular shift register. Right? So similarly, here what happens, so initially I have 1, 0, 1, 1. So initially if the data is already present, if I have 1, 0, 1, 1 as the output of QA, QB, QC and QD. After the first clock pulse, this 1 becomes the input to this. So this 1 will get shifted here, 0 gets shifted here, 1 gets shifted here. So the data is circularly shifted in this direction. Okay, in the anti-clockwise direction where the data moves from QA to QB, QB to QC, QC to QD and back from QD to QA. If we connect QD to the input of the first flip-flop D. Right? Okay. So how do I change this to a 4-bit serial input parallel output unidirectional shift register? So again we make a slight change here. So what do I need? I need a 4-bit serial input. but a parallel output shift register I need a serial input so serial input is the same thing what we have seen so here in case of the first case serial input serial output to get all the 4 bits I need to wait for 7 clock pulses but the data is available at the output of QA, QB, QC and QD after the 4th clock pulse Right? So why wait for three more clock pulses? Can I get the data parallel? Yes, I can get the data. If we take the outputs at QA, so if I if I collect the output at QA, QB, QC and QD, right? So then after the fourth clock pulse, so I ha I'll have one here, we'll have zero, and we get one, and we get one here. Okay, so these four bits can be extracted or can be taken parallelly at the outputs of these four flip flops. So there is no need for us to wait for three more clock pulses. So this is an example of a four bit serial input parallel output shift register. Right? So we observe that a 4-bit serial input, serial output can be converted into a 4-bit circular shift register by connecting QB with the input of the first flip-flop and we can convert the same 4-bit serial input, serial output shift register into a 4-bit serial input parallel output by taking the outputs at QA, QB, QC and QD. Right? So in the next case, let's see how we can design a 4-bit serial or parallel input and serial or parallel output shift register. So I need to have all the options. I need to have serial input, serial output, serial input, parallel output, parallel input, serial output, Parallel input, parallel output. So all these four combinations should be made available in the design. So let's see how that can be done. So we need to design a 4-bit serial or parallel input, serial or parallel output shift register. Of course, they are unidirectional, right? So we have these two options, serial, parallel at the input, and two other options, serial or parallel at the output. So of course, we need four D flip-flops. <coughs> we 
Now you know to design a 4 bit serial input, parallel input, serial input, par serial output, or parallel output shift register, we need 4 D flip flops. Okay? And all the 4 are synchronized, that means they are connected to the same clock. So now we have two options, one is serial, the other one is parallel, right? So since I have two options, either I operate in the serial mode or I operate in the parallel mode. So I need an OR gate to either select serial input or parallel input option. So I have an OR gate. So I use an OR gate. Okay. So this OR gate essentially is that I have two options. So let us begin with the serial input. So I have two options. So I use two IND gates. I have serial input. Serial data input. Okay, and I also have a control line which says I use the serial shift mode or load. Okay, so when this is one, we operate in the serial input mode. So I connect this to the input of an OR gate. Okay. So similarly the output here QA that is given to the input of an AND gate and the other input is, is connected to the shift line. So this is one. Right. So an AND gate QB is connected the other input is connected to the shift line which is made high and we have another AND gate here where QC is connected the other input goes to shift and this is serial output so let's see how this works so when I want serial input serial output mode I need this one so I get a 1 here, 1, 1 and 1. The data is fed here. Okay. So what, whatever data is fed, since the other input to the AND gate is 1, the same data appears here and appears here. The same data appears here and will appear here. And so on. So I have another AND gate. So when I am operating in the serial or the shift mode, this that is the second AND gate should be disabled. Right? So the second AND gate should be disabled. So this is the load condition. So what do we do? We connect this. The same shift is passed through an inverter. Okay? It is passed through an inverter and that is connected to the input of the AND gate. Right, so this is so this is connected to the other input of the AND gate. And this is connected here. So when we are operating in the shift mode, when this is 1, this is 0. So this AND gate is disabled. So I get a 0 here. So this uh, the output is 0, the output is 0, the output is 0 and the output here also is 0. Right? So whatever data appears here, the same data appears here. So we are operating in the serial mode. Now if I want to operate in the parallel mode, but if I want parallel input, then I need to, I need to make this 0. So when this is 0, this AND gate is disabled, the first AND gate is disabled 
and this is enabled because I am passing it through an inverter so this is enabled so I connect parallel input A parallel input B parallel input C and the parallel input D here ok so four inputs PA, PB, PC and PD are given as the input to the second AND gate now this is 1 because this is 0 here the input is 0, shift is 0 so therefore the output of the inverter is 1 so the second AND gate is enabled so if I give data to PA, PB, PC and PD the four parallel inputs say this is 1, 1, 0, 1 I get 1, 1, 0, 1 here so this is parallel input ok and I can extract all the outputs here if I want parallel output condition ok right so let's try to revisit these four cases if I want serial input and parallel output condition what do we do we make this one right so this is one and I have 0 coming to the second AND gate so the second AND gate are all disabled right so the data is given here so I get the first bit after the first clock pulse after the second after the third and after the fourth ok in that case the output is available either parallelly or if I want serial output I need to have three more clock shifts so we have seen that we will get serial output we get all the four bits only after the seventh clock pulse if I want to operate in panel input mode then this is made 0 so the first AND gate is disabled I get some data here if this is 1101 the other input to the second AND gate is all 1 so this 1101 after the first clock pulse which is available here ok will appear at QA, QB, QC and QD ok so the data is given parallelly and is available at QA, QB, QC, QD after the first clock pulse ok so we can obtain the output parallelly also or if I want serial output what do I do after three more clock pulses we will get the output at QD or at S out ok so this is how we can implement a 4 bit serial or parallel input serial or parallel output shift register